Monaco. So we've come here to launch a strategy for the Ministry of Health and Child Care. Uh, there are three scenarios that were used for costing the National Health Strategy. There's a scenario where we don't do anything and maintain business as usual. Then there's a scenario where we scale up priority disease control programs such as maternal and child health, malaria, HIV, nutrition, and NCDs, emphasizing primary care. And then there's the third scenario where we go out, all out, and uh, implement our plans as planned, improve the health service infrastructure, get more staff, train more people, recruit more people. So the scenario one uh, will, will cost us one billion three hundred six million five hundred thousand. That's scenario one. Scenario two would cost us one billion three hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred three hundred twenty-five million hundred thousand. That's in twenty seventeen. And then the third scenario would cost us one billion five hundred fifty-nine million and four hundred thousand dollars. So, Honourable Minister, I think it's very important that uh, these scenarios and these figures also are uh, discussed and debated at the highest levels, given that our 2017 budget is 282 million, of which only 49 million is towards operations, so that we are able to implement this strategy and get the benefits that are projected, the different levels of investment have projections in terms of reduction in morbidity and mortality for the priority conditions of the strategy. So it's costed, and this is the first time I've seen a strategy in health that has been actually been costed. When we do prevention properly, we will decongest the hospital. And that's the message I want the media to know. And I think I've also told the minister, you are a minister of health, not minister of diseases. <laughs> Minister of Health spend more time keeping people healthy. That's what we have seen here today. Congratulations. If you do prevention, you know that for, uh, 10 years ago, 70 to 80 percent of all hospital admissions in the medical wards was due to HIV. Now, because people are getting ARVs, those people are not coming to be admitted anymore. So that is part of the decongestion that is happening. The third thing, it implicitly says, let's work with the donors. At least have one strategy. So it ties us into some coordination that we must coordinate each other. So if you have donors and partners, it is not right that they then come in and do a parallel strategy to what strategy you have. So we must coordinate our strategies. They must come to the strategy that is national. And they are quite right, Dr. Kerr. Once you have got a strategy like this, it's much easier now for partners, for donors, to then say, ah, how can we help you? So it is important for donor coordination, for resource mobilization. So this document to me is so, so critical. Based on the outcome of the various consultations that were undertaken, WHO will concentrate its efforts on broad strategic cooperation agenda over the next five years in the following five priority areas. One, achieving and sustaining universal health coverage through strengthening health systems. Two, accelerating the achievement of unfinished MDGs relating to reduction of maternal, newborn, child and adolescent mortality, 
strengthening sexual and reproductive health. Three, further reducing the burden of HIV, AIDS, TB, malaria, neglected tropical diseases, hepatitis, and other communicable diseases. Four, strengthening and reorienting health and health-related systems to address health disorders, prevention and control of non-communicable diseases, including disabilities, injuries, and mental health disorders. And five, strengthening <coughs> preparedness, surveillance, effective response to disease outbreaks, active public health emergencies, and effective management of health-related aspects of humanitarian disasters in order to improve health security. <laughs> In 2016, the UN family has already started spearheading, uh, uh, led, it by, led by UNICEF, UNFP, WHO, and others, to the government turn the corner from transition to a medium to a long term health program by launching the Health Development Fund. The fund aims to mobilize $680 million with some resources already committed from various development partner, governments of UK, EU, Sweden, and several others. As such, the launch of the national strategy is timely to, to steer ongoing health program, including health development fund, and build on the gain achieved over the last five years. For example, the program uh, support facilitated by UNFPA, UNICEF, WHO on reproductive, maternal, neonatal, child and adolescent health, and health has contributed to the reduction of maternal mortality by 50% in the last five years. This is a great achievement led by the Ministry of Health. Government with support from the Global Fund, USAID, DEFA, UNDP and others currently provides uh, free HIV treatment to nearly a million Zimbabweans, resulting in a steady reduction of the prevalence rate from over 29% to around 13.6 or 7. Uh, WFP and UNICEF have been supporting effort in nutrition, water, hygiene, and sanitation, combating malnutrition and water and power diseases, respectively. These results were made possible by the generosity and a strong partnership of the various development partners, including Australia, Canada, European Union, Ireland, Japan, Sweden, UK, Global Fund, US Charity, and others. It also talks about what we call universal health coverage. Universal health coverage, in order to do waste, must be covered by health. And the financing, when you do get the financing, it should not compromise you to get health services. It should not have your pocket compromise you to get health services. Moving towards universal health coverage is an important aspect of this strategy. Reorienting conventional care towards people-centered care. We need to move from individual to people-centered care. Integrating Health in all policies is our move. Health is not just in the Ministry of Health. It's in agriculture. It's in all other policies in the country. For us, for our purposes here, The most important thing that came out of our new strategy is alignment with the constitution of Zimbabwe. Now health is now taken as a right to the constitution. And the questions are now being asked, what does that mean? Because our constitution says every citizen and permanent resident of Zimbabwe has the right to have access to basic health care services, including reproductive health care services. It also says every person living with a chronic illness has the right to have access to basic health care services for that illness. 
Now, chronic illness simply means to where it's not going to be, she never. How much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? She never. She never. BP, diabetes, cancer, HIV. These are chronic illnesses. It emphasizes the non communicable diseases. We don't put our own cancer and so on and so on. But also, it talks about service delivery. That we must have quality service delivery and equity. No, no one should be left behind. <laughs> Decentralized services, to be able to have health posts, to be able to have more doctors, to upgrade my village health workers, so that the allowances of $14 that they get per month is put up because they're doing so much. So much work that they do. And we don't often recognize them, uh, those issues. And this document addresses that. Tinan Shote Germanis, my institutions, in, our nurses are few. We need more nurses. Now I know that we have got 4,000 unemployed nurses. We are trying to train them. We are trying to train them. But in the name of the 8,000, it's not good. We would want to absorb 8,000 nurses, but we can't. Don't you have to do what you are saying, Dr. Kev, and Dr. Parajula, that we must continue to talk to treasure so that we have more posts, not only of nurses, doctors, all health professionals. So I think this document, it goes a long way. And then I, I felt that it was important to launch it in Mureo. Not because I come from Mureo, but Mureo is a very progressive place. So I, I decided to go to wish to thank you. And now I want to officially launch the National Health Strategy of Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You get copies, especially my head of my department. You get copies. You get Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the test. Thank you, Doctor. Okay.